Stan, would you like to? Sure. Okay. Okay. Good. Take care with us. Absolutely. You look very casual anyway, Monica. It's Friday. Casual. Casual. By your first name, I didn't mean to be rude. Um, I don't know your last name, so I apologize. My last name is Tong, too. And okay, thank yeah. you. I appreciate it, and thank you for taking the time to move us on a busy Friday right before the California uh, Democratic Convention. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're here with SB 562. Um, in case you don't know about that, that's single payer um, right. in California. Mm -hmm. And we're asking um, for um, Assemblymember um, Lowe to please support it, and not only support it, but to sponsor it. We're asking him to sign on as a co-sponsor. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to know um, if that works, and also we can introduce ourselves if you want us to. Sure, let's, let's hear about where you're coming from today. I'm Terry. I'm from San Jose. I'm kind of new to politics, but i um, not new to healthcare working, but I'm um, new to any kind of healthcare insurance. And uh, it's really going bad, of course. The way it's looking, the way the Republicans want it to go, is really going bad. So 562 is the number. It sounds like it's the only way to go, a single-payer type system. And I hope Evan Lowe gets on board with it. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, I'm Joan Simon. I'm from the Santa Clara County Single Payer Health Care Coalition. And I had the honor to meet uh, Evan Lowe at the town hall in Campbell mm, yeah. uh, about two weeks ago. Yeah. Yes. The, in the Orchard City. Orchard City, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Right. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Rick Tubich. I'm one of Evan Lowe's constituents. Um, also, really passionate about LGBTQ issues like he is. and. I think healthcare is kind of one of those things that go hand in hand, especially given the unique challenges that group faces. And so I just really, really hope that he gets behind it. My name is Kristen Phillips Manson. I'm a licensed professional clinical counselor. I'm on the board of the California Association of LPCCs. I also teach at San Jose State University. And I'm here to ask um, Assemblymember Lowe if he will support this human right issue of single payer healthcare. I'm Nelson Chimaran. I'm from San Jose, and uh, I believe health care is a human right, and so I'm here to ask Evan Lowe if, if he would uh, support uh, single-payer health care in California. Uh, Mary Hamilton, I'm from San Jose, uh, one of his constituents. Uh, I have a granddaughter who has cystic fibrosis. Uh, she's nine years old. When she was born, not one insurance company would touch her, would, 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 uh, so I'm scared. I'm scared that, because right now she's got really good health coverage through the children's, uh, San, you know, children's program, and if right. they cut that out, right. she'll die. And I don't, you know, I'm just asking them to please support the bill. I'm Stan Simon, also a constituent, and I'd like to know, is Mr. Lowe supporting this bill? And if he, it, well, let me ask that part of the question first. Is he supporting this bill? That's a great question. Um, SBs are currently still in the Senate side. Um, I think that you heard him at Orchard City Indivisible mm -hmm. and also at our town hall in early April. And mm -hmm. That was also held in Campbell, but it was mm -hmm. at the banquet hall. Um, he did say that he supports single-payer health care. Um, the issue with where the Senate bills are is that it's in the Senate. So we don't really want to be disingenuous by telling you that we're going to support a bill that isn't even in our house yet. There is a very good chance that the bill changes in some way. Um, mm -hmm. Just due to appropriations committee, coming over to the health committee on this side, approps on this side. So he won't see the bill until the assembly floor. He doesn't sit on any of those committees. So he does support single-payer health care, but we won't know what SB 562 looks like until it hits the floor. Okay, I guess my question is this. Since that's really 
doesn't answer the question yes or no. It answers the question maybe. Um, 81% of the Democrats in California support single payer. Right. And probably even more of his constituents. So it's easy to back something when it's hypothetical up in the air, but when it when it hits the tire hits the road, which is what this bill is, that's where we need his support. Okay. And not not only do we need his support eventually to vote for the bill, but we need his support as a person a moral person right now to come out in favor of the bill to help the other people in the assembly who are pushing for it. I understand. Um, I completely understand. You know, there's there's a lot happening in the state this year. Um, with everything happening at the federal level, with everything happening um, internationally, uh, we just, there's a lot of question marks in general for us right now. Um, single payer is something that, again, he does support that. Um, I just, personally, I don't vote. I'm not the member who votes, so I can't tell you exactly where we're going to land on this. Um, but again, he does support single payer. So healthcare. you're saying it's a possibility. If you're saying you can't say where he's going to land on this, that opens the possibility he's going to vote no. I, I can't tell. A, I, if you right. take a statement. Yeah, I, can't, I really well, can't tell you which way. Well, do you realize right what now. a slap in the face that's going to be to his constituency? Sir, I'm, I'm committing to you that we are going to be taking a look at this bill, but what I can't tell you right now is what's going to happen. So we well, yes, actually, question. The bill as it stands now, if there aren't any amendments, would he support it? Again, we haven't looked at it because, oh, we have, it because it's a because Senate bill. Yes. So it's on the completely other side of the House right now. The House of Origin deadline is not till the first week of June. So... The, it will be if it comes out of appropriations committee. Uh, mm -hmm. We won't know that for another week, uh, and then it will head over to the Senate floor. Then it's got to pass the Senate floor, and then it'll come over to the Assembly. This year, they upped the the number of bills that every member could introduce from forty to fifty. So on the Assembly side alone, we have over seventeen hundred bills that we're looking at right now. Mm -hmm. So. When we're looking at 1,700 bills, there's a lot to be focusing on on our end right mm -hmm. now. So, you know, we are committed to taking a look at this when it comes over to our house. But right now, we've got to focus on what is sitting <laughs> in our docket on Monday. I would like to mention that when I went to the Indivisible group mm -hmm. and spoke <coughs> with him, one of, the th one of the things that he was concerned with was the funding. Absolutely. Right? So I... I did explain what I, what, you know, how the funding would work. Um, I told him about we need to get rid of the insurance, health insurance companies because they're pocketing overhead and profit that equals close to 30%. That 30% would go into health care rather than the CEO's pockets. Mm -hmm. So that would be one thing. The other thing is, is under a single payer system, we'd be getting rid of the premiums, co-pays, and deductibles. And getting rid of that, we would pay a small tax, just like we normally do for Medicare and Medicaid and the CHIP program. That tax would be so much less than what we're paying now for, help for the premiums, co-pays, and deductibles. Mm -hmm. So, and the other thing about the funding is that we already pay for Medicare, Medicaid, and, and other federal programs, which right. equals to 70% of, of health care expenses. So we went back and forth, and after that, he said he supports single payer. Correct. So, so he supports single payer, so hopefully we can assume that he would be on board with, with SB 562. Yes, he does support so. he does support single payer, but again, I can't tell you okay. exactly. Well, I want to just be. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Miss mm -hmm. Tong. I also want to defend Miss Tong, if that's okay. Um, just the fact that I know you can we need to recognize the fact that she legally mm -hmm. cannot speak for um, Assemblymember Lowe. <laughs> so I just 
Thank Look, you. I need to jump to your defense. <laughs> I've been in that position before, kind of. So. Yeah. But now saying, remember, Lowe can't speak for himself, right? Yeah. So, and, and if he makes a statement, then you can say he said that. Right. So Absolutely. he hasn't made a statement. No, but he has said publicly, and as we all know, that he does support single pair. So, okay. okay, President Obama, when he was in the uh, Illinois legislature, said he supported single payer, and then when push came to shove, he didn't support single payer. It, that's what I'm afraid of, and I'm looking at here. That's why uh, i asking the pointed questions, because we were burnt once before. Okay, I, I can show you a tape of President Obama 10, 12 years ago getting up and saying he's a complete in favor of single payer, everybody in, nobody out. When he became president, he sold out to the corporations. Okay, so I'm hope we're not, I hope we are not looking at that again. And that's, that's my point. And to go to the financing part, in Europe they pay half the amount for medical care that we pay and get better results. So the, if you want to look at the statistics, they're already there. They're already there. Half the amount, better results. I think that's interesting that you made the comparison to Obama, and he, you know, in earlier times too. And I tend to see um, Assemblymember Lowe as kind of this up-and-coming, um, amazing politician with a really bright future. And I just think that in terms of the direction of this and the timing of this, um, I think it could really be beneficial if he supports it, to, obviously, to the people of California, but also for his political career as well. Mm -hmm. sure. That he's taken some bold stands, and I think that he's gotten recognition as a, you know, kind of a, a politician um, early on in his career. And I really think that this could benefit everyone if he mm -hmm. did too. So mm -hmm. I hope he will um, jump on mm -hmm. and use his, you know, his wonderful charisma mm -hmm. and you know his. His uh, wonderful qualities with the media to really promote this. I think that could really help everyone too. Yeah, I'd be happy to pass that mm -hmm. along. You know, this is his chance to come down yeah. on the side of the people right. instead of the corporations. Sure, I understand. And um, and to be a real hero for a lot of people. Yeah, um, you know, just because we have the super majority in the legislature doesn't mean that these things are easy. Um, oh, you know. Yes, there's a supermajority here, both, you know, in the Assembly and the Senate. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can count on their votes. Does that make sense? Well, look what yeah. happened at yeah. SBA 10. Mm -hmm. When you had six Democrats, four of them voted no, two of them abstained, mm -hmm. and then as a result, four of them were indicted. Were indicted. <laughs> So that's what that's what we've indicted. dealt with mm -hmm. in the past. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm talking about even just mm -hmm. this year, right? Mm -hmm. We had um, Senator Bell's SB one on the floor in early April, mm -hmm. and um, that was not that was not an automatic. We were all here until 10:30 p.m. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. um, so Thank it's you. not no. mm -hmm. it's not something that we can just count on. It's something that mm -hmm. we all have to work for. Um, a lot of the work, you know, you I I believe that the Bay Area delegation is fairly strong on these issues, um, but you you can drive an hour or two outside of the district, and you're in a completely different area of the state, yeah. and those representatives are not might not be in favor of these things, and this is this is where. The energy must be focused, and um, we do appreciate you visiting us today, and I'll be sure to let him know that you were here. Um, but, yeah, please feel free to follow up with us as the bill comes over to the Assembly. We're happy to continue the conversation. It's, you know, hopefully it'll come off of appropriations. I think Senator Lahr is pretty... Um, He's the chair, so right. Um, when that, does, that does that does help. Yeah. Um, Do you have contact information for us to follow up with um, regarding this if it passes on to the? Yeah, I can get you my card. Mm -hmm. When yeah. it comes out of appropriations, and let's presume for the discussion that it passes appropriations, when is Mr. Lowe going to make his statement uh, whether he supports the bill? Is so there that, a time frame for that? I don't know that there's a time frame. 
So we could be sitting wondering what he's going to do for a long time. I mean, you know, I, can, I don't know exactly when, is that, when that's going to happen. So we could be sitting and waiting for a long time. I can't tell you when that's going to happen. Okay, so you're saying yes. <laughs> so it goes into appropriations on the 22nd, and then it goes to the full Senate on June 2nd. By June 2nd. By June 2nd, right. So can we assume any time after that? You know, there, I, I don't like to put okay. dates on things because, you know, who knows what happens that week. Um, yeah. The president could do something and we need to take action on that. Um, you know, something might happen right. locally, like the San Jose floods happened a couple months ago. We might need to be working on things like that. So I can't, right. unfortunately, you can't plan for everything in life and... Um, It'll be, it, it, we're hopeful that it will come over to this house, um, but we'll, as I said, we're happy to continue I guess the reason why we're kind of pushing is because this is a life and death issue. We mm -hmm. have three million people in California who are uninsured. I understand. And that many more underinsured. So we're looking at it pr pr primarily from a morality perspective. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's so important to get as many legislatures on board at, you know, as soon as possible, so we know that there's hope for more people uh, to get health care and not to die as a result of not having health care. Yeah, right. If that Republican health bill goes through like it is right now, they're going to rip a lot of poor people off yeah. any kind of health insurance. We I think need, they're going to yeah. rip a lot of people off of health insurance yeah. in general. And, yeah, but, the, but very, you know, people that are very, very fragile and they need a hero here. We need we need California to protect us. Sure. And just absolutely. tell them that, please. I definitely will. I'd be happy to do okay. that. Now, if you're going to be sharing your contact information um, too, I think it would be great that you know I I really want to trust and believe that Assemblymember Lowe is going to do the right thing, and I'm mm -hmm. going to believe that this also passes the Senate. Um, and I, I'm just wondering too, you know, if you ever feel like you want to. Um, mm -hmm. get in touch with us and, sure. and help us give us some leads of where we should focus our efforts on if he knows that information um, maybe that's a way we could help you great yeah. happy to do that yeah. thank you for you giving card. you my yeah. your card so <laughs> I'll, I'll be definitely putting that right here okay Good. fantastic yeah. well thank you so much I appreciate it yeah, thank you well, thank, thank you for great. being in Sacramento I know it's quite warm <laughs> just a question well, yes. there is a Evan Lowe today is he at another he, he's at another, it, event right at, at another event right now. Another event at the convention center? I don't think he's at the convention center, okay. but he'll be there eventually today. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you.